Hello and welcome to Pharmacy's Pharmacy Teaching videos. These series of videos are focused on minor ailments, so common conditions treated with over-the-counter medications and advice, and today's topic is musculoskeletal pain. Sprains and strains are musculoskeletal injuries, specifically they're soft tissue injuries of the ligaments and muscles. Ankle sprains are the most common form of soft tissue injury in primary care. Muscle strains, or pulls, commonly occur in sports which involve running or jumping which can cause a muscle to overstretch or contract too strongly. Symptoms of sprains and strains include pain, swelling, tenderness, discomfort and muscle tension. However, after a mild strain or sprain, normal daily activities can usually be resumed within one to two weeks. A patient may also see bruises form in the area where capillaries have broken or burst, leading to bleeding under the skin. This usually appears as purple-red blotches, then fades through green into yellow. In terms of treatment options for sprains and strains, short-term treatment with an acronym referred to as RICE is recommended. So R for rest, I for ice, C for compression and E for elevation and this helps to bring down swelling and support to the injury. Rest avoids pain by reducing movement, so stop any exercise or activities and try not to put any weight on the injury to reduce blood flow and allow healing. Ice reduces pain. This can be done by immersing the affected part in ice water for up to 10 minutes or applying a malleable ice pack covered with a wet cloth, such as a bag of frozen peas covered in a towel for up to 15 minutes. This can be repeated as often as desired, usually every two to three hours for 48 hours, allowing the affected part to warm up before repeating. Compression provides comfort by limiting movement, supporting the injury, and may restrict the development of swelling. An elasticated bandage can be applied to the affected part for up to 48 hours after the injury, taking care not to constrict blood flow, so not to make it too tight. This must be used with caution if peripheral arterial disease is present or suspected, so particularly watch out for elderly patients or patients with diabetes. Elevation helps to control swelling. The injured part should be raised above the level of the heart if it's practical to help fluid drain away from the injury. For example, keep the injury raised on a pillow. Another really useful acronym to remember is HARM. Avoid harm for the first 72 hours as it increases inflammation and swelling. And what does harm stand for? H for heat, and this can be from hot baths or heat packs. A for alcohol, R for running, and M for massage. So avoid harm and use rice. Analgesia may also be necessary for pain. Paracetamol is the first choice painkiller for mild sprains and strains. NSAIDs such as ibuprofen can reduce swelling and inflammation but should only be used after 48 hours of the injury as it can slow down the healing process. The oral route should be used as first choice for NSAIDs rather than the topical route but please refer to our pain relief video for when it's not suitable to give NSAIDs to patients such as those with asthma or hypertension. Paracetamol and ibuprofen may be used together if one analgesic alone provides suboptimal pain relief. Topical NSAIDs have a slightly better GI side effect profile compared to the oral route, but are no more efficacious and may cause localized reactions such as skin rashes. Arnica gel is a traditional herbal medicinal product for the symptomatic relief of muscular aches, pains and stiffness, sprains, bruises and swelling and there is good clinical evidence to support use of this herbal product but not the homeopathic version so that's a useful one to remember. When a patient can move the injured area without pain stopping them, encourage them to keep moving it and that's so the joint or muscle doesn't become stiff and it improves the range of movement. After two weeks, most sprains and strains will feel better. Avoid strenuous exercise such as running for up to eight weeks as there's a risk of further damage. In terms of practical advice, 
prevention is better than treatment. So give advice on how to prevent injuries, especially for those who regularly participate in exercise and sport, as recurrent sprains can cause new damage and long-term degeneration of the joints. There is little evidence for it, but warm-ups and stretching may be useful, as well as strength and endurance training. Also, wearing external ankle supports have been shown to reduce the likelihood of ankle injuries. Moving on to referral and danger symptoms to look out for. Immediate action is required, so referring a patient to A&E or to call 999 if they have unexplained deformity, so their body part has changed shape, as well as weakness, bone tenderness or limited limb movement that is not due to pain alone. If a patient has fever, chills and malaise accompanying the injury, then this also requires immediate referral to accident and emergency as they may have an underlying infection. If the patient heard a crack when they had their injury, then they may have a broken bone. And if the injury is numb, discoloured or cold to touch. A patient may be referred to a minor injuries unit or may go to a minor injuries unit if they require an x-ray, but please be aware that not all minor injury units have x-ray facilities, so they may be referred to hospital. Also, if a patient requires stronger painkillers to be prescribed, then they may also go to a minor injuries unit. In terms of referral to a GP, if there is unusual or excessive bruising for no apparent reason, then a patient should be referred to their own GP to rule out more serious underlying diseases such as leukemia. Bruising may also result from side effects of some drugs such as steroids and carbimazole. In the case of carbimazole particularly, patients should be advised to tell their doctor immediately. Excessive bruising should also be referred urgently if the patient is taking anticoagulants as this is likely to be caused by hemorrhage due to incorrect dosing or other possible underlying conditions. And finally, acute low back pain. Low back pain, which is pain between the bottom of the ribs at the back and the top of the legs, is also a very common ailment seen in primary care. Simple back pain usually improves within one week and resolves within a month. Patients with low back pain should be advised to continue with gentle activities, especially walking, with the aim of returning to normal activities as soon as possible. This is the single most important piece of advice to give a patient. Bed rest is not recommended as resting for long periods is likely to make the pain worse. So it's advised to try exercises and stretches for back pain, such as Pilates and muscle strengthening exercises, which can be found on the NHS website. Regular analgesia is recommended, so offer an NSAID, such as ibuprofen, first line, if there are no contraindications. But remember that 48 hour rule with musculoskeletal injuries, so avoid NSAIDs for the first 48 hours, then treatment can be started just in case the back pain is due to a strain. An NSAID should be used at the lowest effective dose for the shortest possible time, and gastroprotective treatment should also be offered while an NSAID is being used. If NSAIDs are contraindicated, not tolerated or ineffective, offer cocodamol instead, but give advice regarding the maximum duration of use to avoid opioid dependence and adverse effects such as constipation, which may exacerbate lower back pain further. According to NICE, it is not recommended to offer paracetamol alone for managing low back pain. Patients may also use hot or cold compression packs for short-term relief. Alternatively, a hot water bottle or a bag of frozen vegetables wrapped in a cloth or towel will work just as well. Although it can be difficult, encourage patients that they're that it really helps if they stay optimistic and recognise that their pain should get better. Patients who manage to stay positive despite their pain tend to recover quicker as psychological perception of pain often goes hand in hand with physical pain. In terms of referral criteria, if low back pain persists for longer than four to six weeks, patients should be referred for more specialist advice from either their GP or through self-referral physiotherapy services, depending on the area that they're in. 
Patients should also be referred if they are experiencing interruptions to their daily activities because of their low back pain, particularly if their pain is worse at night and the pain is made worse when sneezing, coughing or going to the bathroom. Pharmacists should also be aware of red flags in back pain and refer patients who have pain following major trauma such as a vehicle accident. New back pain in patients aged under 20 years or over 50 years. If they have accompanying unintentional weight loss. If they have a past history of malignancy. Associated bladder or bowel symptoms. Widespread or progressive motor weakness in the legs or gait disturbance, so a difference in how they usually walk, or if they have fever accompanying their low back pain. In terms of practical tips, advise patients to do regular back exercises and stretches, stay active, so do regular exercise to help keep your back strong, Adults are advised to do at least 150 minutes of exercise a week. Avoid sitting for long periods of time. Take care when lifting. So they can look up some safe lifting tips, in particular bending with the knees when they lift. Check in their posture when sitting, using computers or watching television. Ensure that their mattress um, on their bed supports them properly and lose weight through a combination of healthy diets and regular exercise if they're overweight as being overweight can increase your risk of developing back pain. So that's all for our musculoskeletal pain video. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions then please feel free to pop us a message or leave a comment. As always please make sure you like and subscribe to our videos and Follow us on Instagram and Facebook if you haven't done so already in order to keep up with our quizzes and posts. Thank you.